Hi, everybody, and welcome back to the Education Hive for 2021. Uh, we're excited today to have with us Claudia, who is a former intern of ours here at SideFX uh, and new to the industry, relatively new to the industry, to so give us the perspective of what a junior artist goes through when they first enter the industry. Claudia, thank you for being with us. Maybe tell us just a little bit about yourself and uh, what's going on. Thank you. Um, yeah, so I've had an interesting lumpy journey through COVID, you know, uh, it's been kind of up and down. Um, and I've been in all sorts of roles. So since then, I've, um, I worked in CFX, you know, and right now I'm um, a lighting artist, actually, uh, for Duke VFX, uh, which is a first for me as well. It's quite interesting. Um, and yeah, really enjoying it, really learning a lot every day, you know. Um, yeah, <laughs> I think definitely the, the knowledge I gained during my time at Side Effects has informed um, what I'm doing today um, because I find that I can take initiative a lot better than I used to. Um, I always thought of myself as someone who could generally like think on the spot, but it's definitely improved um, in the last few months, which you know, obviously I'm happy about. I didn't think I'd be there. I didn't think I'd ever get there, obviously. Um, but when you're under pressure and you sort of have to do it, you're like, right, okay. <laughs> and you dig into your toolbox, right? And uh, and you, you, you get it right eventually. Um, but yeah, it's always, every day is like a problem solving journey. And that's what I've always loved. Um, and you get to be creative and technical at the same time. Like that's never changed for me, you know? Um, so I learn something new every day, yeah. So, Claudia, I'm wondering if you could just kind of tell us a little bit about some of the challenges that you had when you were integrating into a studio uh, as a new artist. Like, what are some of the things that you faced and how did you overcome those challenges? Um, well, every studio has its own pipeline and its own kind of custom made tools as well. And some of them have no pipeline at all. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's like you're trying to integrate into like, it, a new technological system uh, with all these you know custom studio tools on top of having to like integrate socially as well meeting a new team like finding out who's who because production is big you know um there's so many people working on one project and it can feel really overwhelming to begin with i found over time that not being afraid to ask questions is like one of the most important things right not just like sitting there wrapped in an anxious bowl like oh my god what am i doing now like the sooner you ask questions the better um and for me personally it was always feeling like if i ask a question it's gonna seem like a stupid question um but literally like a hundred percent of the time it's not whatever you're asking people are happy to answer your questions sometimes they don't even know the answer to the question themselves but like you doubt yourself right because it's the whole like I can have like imposter syndrome when I get a new job, you know? Sure. And, uh, yeah, feeling so overwhelmed and knowing that everyone around me is so experienced and I'm I'm still fresh and you very easily you can doubt your own skills. Um, so that was very much something that I'd learned just over time. I just needed time to learn that. Um, there's no other way around it really. Um, and yeah, that's been like my number one thing I would say and for new artists too, is just not be afraid to ask questions because you are going to feel really overwhelmed otherwise. We had a conversation with a different studio uh, during part of this hive too, that, that uh, they brought up the balance between working on your own to try to solve the problem. And then at what point does it become a waste of time when you should have just asked? Exactly. So finding that balance was is is a is a big challenge for for new artists, and I would assume that it's that way even if you're an experienced artist uh, coming into a new pipeline or a new studio or a new environment, it's still just trying to find that skill of balancing how much time do I spend and when do I just ask? Yeah, definitely, um, definitely. Yeah, again, like so some of the some of the people working, depending on where you work, you know, they can be like a bible of knowledge, right? Um, and and it saves both of you time if you just if you just ask, you know. Um, and they really won't mind. And most of the time, people are really happy to help. Um, I would say another challenge, though, is when a studio doesn't really have much of a pipeline is the whole being able to think on the spot and do research for yourself and try to kind of figure things out um, rather than completely block up and just go, nope, <laughs> nope, you know. Um, I'm always really scared when I first begin in a new job 
but I still like I don't give up with it you know I'll keep trying until I get it right or at least get part of the answer right um and maybe ask you know whatever else I don't know I'll just go and ask questions and stuff but yeah it, it can be tough you know <laughs> it can be tough um I think working for a good team is important um and when there's a lot of stress in production um it can often feel like you're kind of um not distracting people but like you know oh you know I'm this new junior starting out like you probably don't have very much time right now to talk to me but can I just ask this question so <laughs> right. Right. um yeah um yeah it's uh, it's it's tricky but um I would say those are the two the two main things just like don't be afraid you know and try and think outside a box wherever you can and take take initiative as well yeah yeah Awesome advice. So I have a question for you that's more specific to um, before entering the industry, like when you were, now that you have perspective from both sides, from being a student who was learning uh, visual effects skills and from being somebody who's in the industry now, um, are there specific areas of the pipeline that you think schools should emphasize when it comes to skills development? Like maybe you should have, you, you wish you would have had this more when you were going to school or other junior artists that you work with maybe, and you think, well, maybe we should have had this skill emphasized when they were learning that type of thing. Yeah. I mean, um, I, I feel very lucky in that I went to do a really good master's course at a very good university for, for that subject. Um, and that was, that was in Bournemouth, you know, because what they did is they taught us from the ground up. Um, I would say it's so important to do at least one or two projects where you do the whole project from start to finish, you know, so that you know a bit of like every bit of the pipeline, at least a little bit. I, I was very, always very much for generalist skills. Um, I like that, uh, you know, it, making sure that you're able to carry out, again, at least one project from beginning to end, I think is going to get you really far uh, because in, in big studios, sometimes you can find that they require you to jump from one project to another on very short notice. And sure. they might literally require you to sometimes fill in and do, do things outside of your main role. Um, and if you're able to kind of do that or you know answers to some of the things that someone else doesn't, just doesn't have time to tackle, right? right. Um, I think that's so useful. Um, if you want me to be like super specific, um, I sure. think, again, I've mentioned it before, but I think like Solaris is the way to go right now, you know, uh, teaching that side of Houdini definitely. I personally, uh, want to kind of dig a little deeper into that and also shader writing. <laughs> uh, that's such a complicated subject and you could like read 10 books on it and, um, it's still like, yeah, it just barely scratches the surface, you know? Um, yeah, I remember yeah. Uh, when I was in, in school learning visual effects, we had to write the RenderMan plastic shader in Notepad. Oh. Like just type out the code for it <laughs> yeah. and then like see if we could get a, a sphere to look like plastic. And it was just a nightmare having to do that. Yeah. So um, yeah, shader um, writing is a complex area of the pipe for sure. I, I would also say, uh, because I see this time and time again, um, every studio I go to is, you know, a bit of X, you know, a bit of Python. Um, just make sure you know some some sort of code, you know, um, or, you know, you're comfortable kind of using expressions, especially in a software like Houdini, because uh, it's really going to get you far. And you tend to need it in literally every area of the pipeline at some point. Um, so definitely that as well. <laughs> Right, right. I guess this question kind of piggybacks on that as well. Um, so we're talking kind of about skills that studios seem to look for in junior artists. Yeah. Um, are there any other like long term skills other than just being able to know Python or know Vex? Like, are there any other things that are more broad that you see studios looking for? I'm also wondering about like interpersonal skills, right? Uh, communication and being able to do feedback and those kinds of things. Have you had experiences uh, around those? situations um yeah um yeah in terms of the more general skills i would say again the ability to learn on the job and pick things up fast <laughs> because 
it's, sometimes you just have to, you know, um, or at least you have the drive to learn. Like if you show that enthusiasm from the beginning, that already strengthens your bond with your supervisors from the get go. Because they know that you're not just sitting there and like waiting for someone to give you a task. You're able to, again, take that initiative, right? And definitely problem solving as well. Again, that there, there are often things that, um, you know, your, your people that oversee you kind of, they, they can get so busy during production sometimes. Sometimes they've gone for like a whole day. Um, and there's all these little tasks that you need doing. And if, if you're able to just sit down and kind of try and figure them out yourself, you know, um, I think that's a, such a useful skill. Uh, I don't want to say basically do all the dirty little work that no one else has time for. Um, but, you know, these small tasks get you far because um, they, they, when you then get a proper shot to work on, you're like, oh, okay, I actually know what I'm doing now, you know, because I already worked so tediously on this little area that seemed totally irrelevant before. Um, but, but it isn't, you know, it's like kind of, like it's a collective thing. And, and it's good warm up for sort of bigger tasks as well. Um, communication definitely is key. Um, just don't be afraid to show that you're human and that you can make mistakes as well, you know? Um, don't pretend, don't pretend that you know everything. Cause actually I think that's a big pitfall. Um, it can often seem like you, you know, you're gonna give the impression that you know you know, this much or that much. And then when you get to a role task, you will actually make a mistake uh, without meaning to. And, and then, you know, we'll get into an actual problem. Whereas if you establish from the beginning, right, these are my limitations. This is what I know. This is what I don't know. Um, you're likely going to, you're likely going to have much better communication, uh, but also less tension and less pressure on yourself as well. Um, and I think a lot of uh, studios actually really appreciate that if you're just honest and forward and communicating from the beginning. Yeah, I would, I would agree with that. It's almost like inevitably you're going to, to kick yourself anyway, because if you say, yes, yeah. I can do that. And then they give you that task and you go, Oh, I was lying. You know, yeah, like, Oh, I did. I don't know how exactly. to do that. <laughs> like just because they ask you to do it doesn't equate them saying that they're, they're expecting you to do it right now, to know it. They're just asking, okay, can you do this? Um, but don't don't be afraid to like be straight up about it, you know? <laughs> well, actually, you know, I need a bit of help with that. And actually chances are there's someone who, someone else on the team who might be able to like hop on a call and help you out. Uh, and then both yeah. of you can figure it out together. And then you, you go to your supervisor, you're like, okay, yeah, I got this, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's just yeah, way better. Uh, and it, as a result, you know, you, you then again, like build a list of people that you always know who to go to for a particular problem. Like, oh, this guy's good with simulations. This guy's, you know, great with room stuff. So <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's pretty great. <laughs> you don't feel as alone that way. <laughs> yeah, it's always good to have a support group, especially when you're, you're first, first getting started at a gig, right? Yeah, for sure. Um, Okay, so I have a question for you too. Again, just because of your like unique experience on the Hive right now, which is that you've seen both sides and you have this this initial level of experience. What advice do you have for students that are just about to graduate or that have just graduated? Like, what uh, what would you you to let them know to do? Uh, what steps would you have them take for getting into the industry? Mm. You mean at the kind of education stage or in terms of getting like work experience, things like that? Uh, yeah, basically if, it, if you had just graduated uh, and you could look back in hindsight and go, oh man, if I would have done this or this or this, you know, now that you know that you've already what to do, what are the things that you might've changed or that you would, you would recommend that a student do that they might not know to do from, yeah. from this perspective? Yeah. Um, for a start, like apply for everything that's out there, even if you think it's outside of your, you know, the entry requirements, uh, because the entry requirements are always like the ideal golden list of things that they want you to have. But sometimes you also you can actually surprise yourself, you know, that you can bring forward a quality that um, you didn't even think would get you this far, and then boom, you like you get an interview. You know, it can be a tedious process. 
Um, but literally the worst thing that can happen is they say no. And at least you get your name out there and you're, you're being enthusiastic. I would also say, don't just, um, don't just mindlessly scroll through like LinkedIn and Indeed and whatever, and just apply these jobs using the like automated buttons or whatever and the features. Right, Email right. them directly if you can. Um, it's so much more personal, like introduce yourself, you know, kind of show your enthusiasm. Um, that That's where I would start because that, that gives you the potential to, you know, gain experience, you know, even if you start off small, um, don't limit yourself and don't be scared to kind of gain experience in areas that don't feel like they don't feel like it's your kind of thing. You know, I'm not saying don't go for jobs that you hate. <laughs> Right, right. But at least to start off with, you know, the thing in the in this industry, like your contracts tend to be quite short anyways. So <laughs> if, even if you get three months here and there, that's already three months, you know, in this studio or that studio. And you can already put that on your CV. And every time it gets that little bit easier to get the next job. Um, obviously, also practice makes perfect. Um, I would set like set yourself a personal project. They're like, okay, I'm going to do this. I, I don't know. I'm going to groom. <laughs> um, I'm going to groom a creature, right? And um, make like a mood board or something, make a color chart, um, jot down a bunch of ideas, have like a notebook by your side always and set yourself goals. Um, that was a problem for me at the beginning as well, especially during COVID nothing in the world had any structure and it felt so overwhelming for all of us I think like it, it was just too much you know mentally in some parts and um, it, it can kind of feel out of control but if there's at least one thing in your life that uh, where you can implement structure um, do it implement it into something creative something that you enjoy um, even if it's just like a small project you know and then that's always something you can add into your showreel, right? Say, I've done this in my free time. Because what you do outside of your free time, I think matters a lot as well. Yeah, very much so, very much so. Uh, again, that's something that, that has come up in other conversations we've had uh, where people have said that we they will actually look, they look at your reel, of course, and then the next thing that they look at is, what did you do that has nothing to do with the industry? Were you a barista? Did you work at a taco shop? Whatever it might be, like how did you spend your time and, and were you just hanging out or were you actually yeah. doing things? Yeah, it is, yeah. it's important. Yeah, and so, I mean, if you, I, I was just gonna say like, even if you, if you find that you don't have time for that and it's so hard for you to get that first job, there's absolutely nothing wrong with like getting a side job to begin with, just like a part-time job. And then you do these projects at the beginning. Don't underestimate the personal work that you do as well you know that matters a lot um and you have to enjoy it otherwise you're going to burn out pretty soon <laughs> yeah right right it's got to be a passion passion project definitely yeah so you mentioned um earlier w working through covid and i'm just i'm curious you're in the uk correct yes i am <laughs> so what what is it i'm assuming that you've been working uh, remotely too is that correct yep yep the whole time <laughs> So what has that experience uh, been like, like working for a studio, but doing it from uh, remotely? You mentioned earlier, like being able to pick up on a phone call with somebody to ask a question and, and then get back with a supervisor. It's not like you're walking down the hallway. Like, have you found yeah. that to be? Yeah. How's that experience been like for you? If I'm honest, I do like, I do like the experience of physically being in a studio, meeting people, you know, the problem is, though, uh, I think a lot of people find this. Um, sometimes in life, you don't have flexibility necessarily to move where you need to in order to to do certain jobs. You know, I, I have to be in a certain place for certain reasons. And um, being able to work remotely, just it, it's it's a lot less stress, you know, because I don't literally have to move cities to get an income um, and do the thing I love. Um, as you know, a lot of kind of in, in the UK specifically, a lot of studios are kind of congregated in London specifically. Uh, and I, I really wish there was just slightly more kind of diversity there, you know, 
Sure. Yeah, and I know there's, there's smaller studios here and there, but I really hope that it's going to sort of move in that direction in the future. Um, because when it comes when it comes to remote work, you know that that's a plus. Like you don't have to move anywhere. It's great. You can just hop on a call whenever you need to. If you have a question, you just write one down, you know, and you you get things back, you know. But it, it can feel quite um, isolating at times and overwhelming as well. Um, you can't just literally walk up to a supervisor and be like, okay, I'm struggling with this, or I'm having these IT problems, right? you have to try and communicate all of that online. Uh, it is a struggle sometimes, you know, there's, there's, you know, share your screen features and, and stuff like that. But sometimes you run into problems that are just a bit, it's a bit more complex than that. And you really wish someone could just like, just take your computer and just do it for you. Um, another thing as well, it adds an extra layer to the stuff, the amount of stuff that you have to learn when you first start a job, you know, with a company, sure. um, because there's all these added security measures and things like that. There's ways of connecting remotely to the machines, you know, everything is like double verification, you know, <laughs> it's always, uh, it, it's an added layer and just another thing that you have to learn in sort of your first few week, weeks and you have to pick that up relatively fast, you know, so, uh, so you can like start working on your shots. Um, I've gotten used to it, I would say, um, but every time I kind of start a new role, it doesn't necessarily get any easier, you know? You still have to learn a lot every time. Um, well, I would say, I, I think it's, I should definitely point this out that um, yeah. you from the beginning of the pandemic, like you, you were an intern <laughs> with us. Uh, I think you had maybe a few weeks in the office, maybe three I weeks did. in the office. Uh, had moved to a different country to be in Toronto and then uh, the pandemic hit and we said go back to your apartment and here's a computer try to carry it home on the subway and hope everything works out so you you have had a very unique experience of working remote when you were forced to do it as an intern and then moving into the field as a junior artist you're still able to apply those skills so like what was what was that experience like like I, I know a little bit from the inside from my point of view but I'm, I'm you know curious to know if you could share some of that uh yeah i mean it feels a bit like when i was a side effects it was definitely new i was very scared you know uh i remember at the beginning having massive wi-fi issues as well and i'd literally just moved into that new apartment as well so uh <laughs> uh yeah i um i had notes all over the place uh, it taught me to definitely be like i'm already an organized person but I tend to take so many notes, uh, you know, when I'm in roles like these that I sometimes lose track of them myself. And it just taught me to be even more organized sort of thing um, because I couldn't always reach, you know, whoever I needed. And, you know, in those first few weeks of side effects, I barely just got to like know all the names of people as well that would later on be able to help me with any technical issues. So if you remember, like I still, I had to like go through you a little bit and ask, oh, who's the per best person to message for this or who's the best mes person to message for that, you know? Um, so it, yeah, it can, the process can feel a bit slower and you feel a little more, you have to be very independent, but you also feel a little more dependent in, in some areas, if that makes any sense. Um, sure, sure. Yeah, it's everything's so new and you're not, it's trying to like keep on top of it all right there's too much change too much change all the time um which is quite reflective of the the nature of this industry anyway because we always have to learn um new software new tools constantly right things are always getting swapped over or updated right but if you if you have to do that in life as well <laughs> it gets a bit too much at times um well, I can yeah, definitely I say you did an extremely awesome job for us uh, and obviously have gone on to do some really, really great work in industry. And I'm so happy and congratulations for your success and, and where you're at. And thank you for being with us today. I really appreciate your time. Thank you. Yeah, it's great to, to see you guys again. <laughs> I definitely miss side effects. <laughs> <laughs> we miss you too. <laughs>